The therapists. We are introduced to two ladies, Judith and Naomi, meeting up in a hairdressing salon. Judith was hiding a black eye behind dark shades. Naomi on seeing this hands her divorce papers. Judith collects them in silence. Judy returns home, drops the divorce papers, and rushes to the restroom to let something out. She stares at her reflection, reminisces on how she obtained the black eye. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> she steps out of the restroom to see her husband, Williams, staring at the divorce papers with gravity. She is scared he will pommel her. He had bought her a $500 dress and requests they go out for dinner. She covers the black eye with makeup. Williams stays late at work while his wife waits for him till she falls asleep. He could not make it in time for the dinner. He sends a card to apologize. She is disappointed. He comes back home and questions where she has been. I said, where are you coming from? If you want to beat me, let me remove your $500 dress before you do it. And you do it well. He apologizes for keeping her up and not coming back in time for the dinner. I got you a gift. How much is that one? One billion dollars, right? The next day, Judith tells Naomi she couldn't serve her husband the divorce papers. Are you even listening to yourself? He steps in during their conversation. He said he came in early to make up for the missed dinner. Naomi takes her leave. He requests for another dinner, but she declines. She tucks him in bed and gives him a kiss. She still loves him despite all the abuse. They spend the night together. Judith tells Naomi she does not want to carry on with the divorce because Williams has a bad temper, but he is not a bad person. Judith says she wants her marriage to work. Naomi then recommends that they see a therapist named Femi Benga. Who is Femi Benga? I don't need a The next day, Judy finds a very disrespectful woman in her sitting room. I'm a guest. Visiting the owner of the house. I am the owner of the house. I mean the real owner of the house. Williams claims she is his new secretary. Judith does not believe him and confronts him. She gets some. He tries apologizing, but it's too late. She locks herself in the bathroom and calls Naomi to let her know she had agreed to see the therapist. She meets Femi, the therapist, with his friend Eric in a laundromat. I am Femi Igbenga. He asks her the reason for seeking him, and she reveals. Shit. Femi is having issues with his girlfriend, Ibinabo, because she finds him boring. He is too nice. His friend tries to cheer him up by introducing him to a girl. He rejects the offer. Ibn Abol later comes back after having fun. He takes her back. I'm sure we can still fix this. Simp. Judith has a therapy session with Femi during which she reveals she got married at 19 and has been married for 9 years. She has had two miscarriages. We get a flashback to when the relationship was good and she was pregnant. They had an argument. That was how she lost the last pregnancy. Wait. So you mean, you mean she got married at such a young age? Is that a crime? This therapist does not know what confidential means. During the next therapy session, they go into a heated discussion regarding colors, and she discovers she's not been paying attention to the little things. He advises her to go on a date with her husband, even though he is a very busy man. She heeds his advice and serves dinner while dressed in a blue dress, her husband's favorite color. He compliments her outfit but does not stay for dinner. She's frustrated and complains about it during her next therapy session. Femi confronts her about her insecurities. Maybe I should just go ahead with a divorce. Okay. But I don't want to. Okay. Is that all you're going to say? He explains that she is scared of leaving her husband and being alone, as he is the person she knows for a significant part of her adult life. So much so, she no longer engages in her hobbies. He then takes her out as part of the, the therapy session. They go out to get something to eat and visit other places during which she drops some nuggets of wisdom. Most people see marriage as a title rather than a union that was established for companionship. Femi says her husband has more time on his hands because he is now successful. He may even get to club on the weekends, something she is not aware of. He then asks why she is still married and she claims she is still in love with him. Femi exposes that she got married off early by her parents, which denied her to fulfill her wishes with her first true love. She gets defensive when he asks her for the reason for her first black eye. She reveals she had left the home untidy when her husband came home unexpectedly with visitors. He explains to her that if she really wants her marriage to work, she must equally accept solving her part of the blame, not just her husband. He explains that the first three years of marriage are the most important because that is when perception is built. 
He brings up the fact that her husband does not want to open up to her regarding his traumatic experience with his parents because of those first few years. Judy reveals to her husband she wants to get off birth control so they can have kids. The next morning, they were in a jovial mood and her husband asks her to come over to the office later that afternoon. She complains about the secretary, which spoils his mood. She explains this to the therapist and he explains she must learn to put aside her insecurities. He again takes her out as part of the therapy session. They play board games with his friend Eric. When she gets back home, she meets her husband having lunch to make up for missing breakfast. She says she had eaten but she would love to sit with him while he eats. He tells her he had fired the secretary because he believed that was what his wife wanted. She clarifies she never wanted her fired, just for him to acknowledge there was no affair between them. In the next therapy session, Femi discusses the importance of communication in relationships. It is not just about what is verbally said, but how it is said. She may not have expressly told her husband to fire his secretary, but she implied it. They talk more about miscommunication and she mentions her husband does not discuss his nightmares with her. Femi identifies the problem to be that her husband thinks she's naive, while she expects her husband should be a magician. You, on the other hand, think that he's well experienced and should be able to get into your mind. Exactly. He drops more nuggets of wisdom. Marriage is a connection for two people who want to be together, not people who have to be together. Next, we receive lessons on how to slice hard tomatoes. Judith and Williams are in bed. Williams is working on his laptop while Judith snuggles up to him to come and collect some pum pum. He is not having any of it. It makes her philosophical during her next therapy session. What we want is not always what we get. She gets a call from her husband and was going to tell the therapist what it was about, but he declines, saying she needs to learn how to make her own decisions. William was offering her the option of getting a job, to which she initially declines. Femi advises her that having a job will help redefine her. She tells William she would want to start a business with his expertise. It's so comforting seeing her not to receive any more punches. Her next contact with the therapist had their rules reversed. Who? Your fiancé. Ibn Amor. That's a very lovely name. And she is a lucky girl. She is. It's okay. I saw Ibn post on Instagram. She was in Ghana a few days ago. It's okay. Judith comes to see Femi at the laundromat where Eric asks why she has no friends aside from Femi. Our, our relationship is strictly professional. Ibinabo confronts Femi because she overheard he was running around town with another woman. Wait, didn't she want to spice up her relationship? Hey, clients, indeed. Indeed, I'm done. I won't sit down and watch you make a mockery of me. No, I am done with you. Are you not going to stop me? Ah, she needs more spice. Eric later confronts Femi that he didn't want to chase in Binabo anymore because he had feelings for Judith. Femi denies this. Judith and I? There's, there's nothing between us. Williams notices his wife was paying a lot of attention to her phone. She was starting to get obsessed with her therapist. She calls him late at night. He rejects her call. Judith tells Naomi she thinks she's in love with Femi. Then just tell him exactly how you feel and forget about Williams. Oh, no. Come on, what's that to lose? What's that to lose my marriage? Look, I would say lose your marriage if it will help you find true love. What a friend. When she gets back home, her husband finally opens up to her with an album. We get a flashback to his childhood and discover his dad was very abusive. He had lost both of his parents to a car crash during a fight. He apologizes for being abusive. Judith confronts Femi for avoiding her calls. He becomes professional. Uh, my session with you is tomorrow. I'd like us to stick with that. Really? Have a great day. Meanwhile, Judith's friend Naomi visits Williams in his office to report. It's about Judith and the man she's been seeing behind your back. Friend indeed. Williams gets home and searches for his wife but she is not home. She had taken some fruits for Femi. She arrives home late. The next day her husband's attitude towards her was cold. He comes back from work to find the food in the kitchen burning. He confronts his wife who had been busy drooling over Femi's Instagram feed. He mentions the straw that breaks this camel's back. Oh, 
that appear to be really off lately. You mean I've been really happy lately? I think you actually like to see me sad. Excuse me? I love to see you happy. No, you love to see me sad. She says she's done with the marriage and proceeds to sign the divorce papers. She leaves her home and heads to Femi's place, but he was not willing to have her stay at his place because she was still a married woman. He gets her lodged in a hotel. Naomi tries to seduce Williams now that Judith was not at home. He was not having any of it. Say what you mean, Williams is a master at rejecting Pum Pum. Judith complains she is no longer comfortable with staying at the hotel. She finally confesses to Femi that she is in love with him. He rejects her advances and tells her she is confused and drops more wisdom bombs. The entire therapy wasn't for you to fall in love with me. It was for you to fall in love with yourself. He tells her Williams truly loves her and trying to get a quick fix won't solve her problems. He explains more about love. Love is sacrifice. Love is endurance. Love is patience. Love is sticking around even with the worst woman. Love Guru. He tells her she can still fix her marriage if she starts with fixing herself. She goes back home and discovers her husband did not sign the divorce papers. He apologizes to her and tells her he was willing and ready to work on their marriage because he loves her. I love you. I love you too. They hug and make up. Meanwhile, Femi breaks up with Ibinabo permanently. The movie ends with one last nugget from Femi. Never force someone to be in your life. If love doesn't want you, don't fight it. I recommend this movie to couples with relationship tussles. You're the most stupid woman I've ever seen. And that makes you the husband of a stupid woman. Me! The lessons in this story are, love yourself first, watch who you call friends and get rid of toxic people.